Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Church of the Well. My name is Pastor Kia Moore. I'm the pastor of the Church of the Well based here in Memphis, Tennessee. Go ahead and let me know where you guys are streaming from, how many people are streaming with you, um, and if you are a well dater, a well maker, or a first timer. Um, if you're new here, that is how we check in. We want to know um, if people are members of our church. Um, if they're not members of our church, if they're hanging out with us, or if this is their first time. So if you're a well dater, that means that I'm not your pastor. You hang out with us, but you haven't chosen to join us. We want to know if you're there. If you're a well maker, that means you're a member of our church, that um, I am your pastor, that you've joined our church. Um, we want to know that. And if today is your first time streaming with us or worshiping with us, because prior to the pandemic, we had just got a new building and we were excited about that. And so if you are a well dater, a well maker, or a first timer, do me a favor and let me know in the comments and let me know where you're streaming from and how many people are streaming with you. I see you, Aisha and Saginaw, my birthplace uh, with three people. Um, we've got some people, y'all. So we're in Saginaw, Michigan. We got some people in Oregon today, uh, some folks in Memphis, and we're just excited. I see Delilah. She's in Cordova. We got some people in Texas, some people in Arkansas, and I'm so grateful for the Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana people who are streaming today. We did some check-ins this weekend. Uh, we didn't get to call as many people as we wanted to because some of our members had their power out. Some of them didn't have water. Some of them couldn't get out of their house. So it was a lot going on, um, but... We are grateful for those of you that made it through this unprecedented winter weather, um, and we're excited uh, to have you today. Today, we're still in our Insecure series, uh, and today we're talking about how do you know if it's toxic. Um, and so it's not just about relationships, but I want to help you spot toxicity in your life today. And so I think today is going to bless us. Again, if you're just tuning in, I apologize about the delay. Y'all know we're streaming directly from my house and it's just me that's running the setup. And today, the streaming system that we use to um, put out our stream, um, it required an update. And then once we updated, it didn't recognize any of the hardware. It didn't recognize the computer. It didn't recognize um, the, the cameras um, or the cords. And so there was a lot of troubleshooting to, to get this, but I did it in about 15 minutes by myself. So that's exciting. Also, I've been working really, really hard um, with the health department. You'll hear about it starting later on this week. But um, I submitted a proposal because there was this disparity with um, black people getting the vaccine. And so they're going to be working with some black churches um, to do some things you'll hear about really soon. Um, and it's part of a proposal I submitted. They were already kind of theorizing. I found that out today, but they didn't they didn't um, they didn't have they were already theorizing it, but it had not come to life. And so it was coincidental that I sent in a proposal and I already had the pastors ready to do what they were already thinking about doing. And so God allowed me to be a part of this process that's about to roll up this week. And so I have been on calls with the health department all last night, all this morning and pastors this morning. And so I've had a chaotic morning, but that is what God has called me to do. So go ahead, uh, shoot that uh, mass text out if it hadn't gone out yet. Also, text your friends, text your small group members, let them know that we are live. Our numbers are a little low. Y'all know I like to see us at least at 100 before we get rolling, and we 40 people short this morning. So go ahead. Now, we got almost 400 members, but that's why asking how many people are streaming with you is important because although there's only 64 screens watching, you got three people in Oregon, three people in Cordova, three people in Texas. So those numbers add up. And so, um, and even on a typical Sunday, you don't have your whole membership show up. But I like to see that number at around 100 before we really get going. So go ahead. Send out that mass text, text your friends, make your posts, uh, share it in your stories, text your small group leaders and members and let them know that we are talking about how to identify what's toxic in your life today. So I'm excited. We're going to go ahead and get started. We have another funny welcome um, from the Wilsons. Y'all, they are hilarious. Um, and we had this uh, for a few weeks. We've been waiting to see if we were going to use it. And so I was excited uh, when I checked the uh, when I checked the Dropbox for the files to see um, that we were going to be using their welcome. So let's get into their welcome and into worship. And then I will be back. Well, what a love reside, what a peace reside, what a love reside, reside. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm doing the, you know the, the, the. No, they just wanted us to do a regular welcome. That was it. Like, hey, my name is Erin Wilson and this is my husband, Fadarg. Welcome to the whale. We hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy a Holy Spirit inspired message coming up next. That's uh, it. I don't know about that. I like my better. Welcome to the whale. Oh! me. 
Welcome to the Church of the Well. My name is Pastor Kia Moore. I'm the proud pastor of the Church of the Well based here uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. And that was Alicia Reynolds, our e-worship leader. We're so blessed to have her. I already got a sneak peek um, of the worship experience, the second half of the worship experience. And by the end, all of y'all will probably be crying. So grab the tissues. Um, but today is a special day. We're going to continue our series on Insecure. And I don't have much. Normally, we break up the worship so that I can do some announcements. But I don't have much um, to add to the worship experience outside of the preached words. So let's pray. God, we thank you. We give you glory and honor for this day. We thank you for your power, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for your presence, God. And today, God, we ask you, that you give us the grace and the mercy to navigate the places where you have placed us, God. That you give us the language, God, to communicate things you have called us to communicate. That you give us the discernment, God, to determine whether or not environments are toxic. That you help us to avoid landmines and to dodge the traps that the enemy has set before us. That you, God, seal the minds of the people that we have to work with. That they may not be influenced by the enemy to war or work against us. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus that you have given us the ability to neutralize toxic environments. That you give us the ability to avoid toxicity that we don't even need to engage with God that you would allow us to come out of toxic situations looking better than we came into them God that we God would be able to leave difficult things God in ways that please and honor you God that we God would avoid people who have bad intentions impure motives or people that can be used by the enemy unaware and still be working against us and your plan and so we thank you God that every tongue that rises up against us God that you will condemn we thank you God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper we thank you that you've given us power to tread upon surface and that even if we drank poison, it would not kill us. And so we thank you and give you glory and honor for the Holy Spirit, God, that helps us to navigate difficult terrains, the Holy Spirit that helps us to have difficult conversations, the Holy Spirit that helps us to go into new territories, God, into new realms, God, into new and into new into new places, into new dimensions, God, and to give you glory as we go because we are doing what you have called us to do, when you've called us to do it, with the people you've called us to do it, exactly the way you've called us to do it, in the places where you've called us to do it, God, perfect timing in our lives, God, perfect seasons in our lives, synchronicity with heaven in our lives. I speak full alignment with the kingdom into our lives. 
aligns, God, and if anything in our life, God, is misaligned, God, that you would cause an adjustment to happen immediately now, that things will begin to come together, that hearts will begin to change, God, that emails will get resent before they even made it into the atmosphere, that phone calls will get rejected, God, even before they were sent, God, that anything that is rising up against us, God, that you would thwart the plans and send it back, that you would scatter and confuse the enemy so much that it does not even notice what we're doing over here when we're doing what is in your will. And so we thank you and give you glory and honor, God, that health reports will mysteriously come back, God, good, God, that employee reports will mysteriously come back God well God that 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 the the, the uh, logistics I mean not logistics God the analytics of our cars when we go to get a diagnostic test that it would miraculously come back well God that reports about our children would come back well that everything in our lives would be well God in places where we expected a bad report or a bad response that you would instantly turn it around and reframe it for our good God you are working God even in the chaos you're working even in the confusing you're working even in the storm you're working God even when the power is out, you're working. Even when the water is out, you're working. Even when the water might be contaminated, you're working. Even when the grocery stores are empty, you're working. Even when we can't get out of our driveways, you're working. Even when the cars drop, you're working. Even when the proposal didn't go through, you're working. Even when the funding didn't come, you're working. And so help us, God, to see that you're working, even against our own anxiety, even against our own insecurity, even against our own fears, even against our own doubts. God, make us to be more confident in you so that we are confident when the process is happening, but it might not go according to our plans. God, help us not to turn our back on your plan because it is not going according to our plan. Help us not to turn our back on your promise because it is not going according to our desires. Help us not to look down on the things you've called us to do because it is not looking the way we thought it was going to look. Help us not to discount the promise because it's wrapped in packaging we were not ready to receive. God, move us into the places you called us to move in. Change our preferences, our desires, and our inclinations so that they might be in alignment with heaven so that when heaven responds, we know that it is heaven. We thank you. We give you glory and honor for, the, for what you're doing today, for what you are doing for us now, for what you are doing for us in the future, and for the doors that you're closing. God, that we were afraid to close and the doors you're opening that we didn't even think could be opened. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank God, let us get back into worship. Your love, my heart, is all of me. Your 
Oh, Israel. 
believe that God is a good father, why don't you type that in the comments that you're grateful for a good father. I know um, some of my fellow clergy, uh, they, they, they use inclusive language, but for me, and, I, and, I, and that is fine, but for me, he's always been a father. I didn't grow up with a father in my home, and so for me, um, thinking of um, having someone in heaven, you know, who was covering me and protecting me and looking out for me, did something for me, and so while I do not dishonor the experiences of people, who see God as a mother. For me, he's just always been a father. And so that that is how I see God. Um, and so I thank God for God. <laughs> That's what the old people say. Thank God for God. Thank, you know, thank Jesus for God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for God. And so I, I'm just grateful for my father in heaven um, who has looked out for me, who has loved me, who has loved me in spite of myself and loved me through my mistakes and my missteps. Sometimes you move too fast and God is still there with you. Sometimes you drag your feet and he's still there with you. Like it is just a blessing to have the love of our father. Um, let's get into um, the scripture for today. The scripture for today, uh, you'll find that um, in the uh, 16th chapter of Judges, we are still in our series Insecure, where we are breaking down how to spot our own insecurities of the other, the insecurities of other people, and how do we navigate what that looks like. And so today, we're talking about how um, toxic people can prey um, on our insecurities. And so, um, if you look uh, at the scripture, you'll find. Uh, Judges 16, uh, when we're looking at 1 through 22, Judges 16, 1 through 22, quite a bit of scripture, but I always come from the context that I cannot assume that the people who attend the well know the Bible uh, or have, you know, been in Bible-based churches. And so we read a lot more scripture here than you might at other churches because I don't want to assume that you know um, the stories, even if it's a popular story like Samson and Delilah, or I don't want to assume that you know the specifics because what we do know is people will twist scripture really quick to make a point. And so you may have grown up your entire life hearing it read wrong or hearing it, uh, hearing it, the story recounted incorrectly. And so I want to read it so that you see it for yourselves. And so we're in the 16th chapter of Judges, verses 1 through 22. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. If you're new here, that is my version of choice. Um, and so let's start with verse 1. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw a prostitute there and went in to her. Uh, you, you can read between the lines. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they were, sorry, I heard Harper whispering. 
her. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw a prostitute there and went into her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they surrounded the place and waited all night at the gate of the city to ambush him. They kept quiet all night saying, in the morning, when it is light, we will kill him. But Samson lay resting until midnight. Then at midnight, he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two doorposts and pulled them up, security bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill, which is opposite Hebron. After this... He fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So the five lords or governors of the Philistines came to her and said to her, persuade him and see where his great strength lies and find out how he may overpower him so that we may bind him to subdue him. And each of us will give you 1100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and what you may and what you may be bound. Wait, and what you may be bound and subdued. Um, my, my words are growing together. Hold on. Yes. S please tell me what your great, where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound and subdued. Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh cords, tendons that have not been dried, then I will be weak and be like any other man. Then the Philistine lords brought her seven fresh cords and they had not been dried and she bound them and bound him with them. Now she had been lying in ambush in an inner room. And she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he broke the cords as a string of toe breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Verse 10 says, then Delilah said to Samson, see, now you have mocked and told me lies. Now, please tell me truthfully how you may be bound. He said to her, if they bind me tightly with new ropes that have not been used, then I will become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with what bound him with them and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in the inner room, but he snapped the ropes of his arms like sewing thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me truthfully, what would make you bound? And he said to her, if you weave the seven braids of my hair with a web and fasten it with a pen, then I'll become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks braids of the hair and wove them into the web. And she fastened it with a pen of the loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he woke up from his sleep and pulled out the pen of the weaver's loom and the web. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you? When your heart is not with me, you have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. When she pressured him day after day with her words and pleaded with him, he was annoyed to death. Then finally, he told her everything that was in his heart and said to her, a razor has never been used on my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, then my strength will leave me and I will become weak and be like any other man. Then Delilah realized that he had told her everything in his heart. So she sent and called for the Philistine Lord saying, come to this, come up this once because he has told me everything in his heart. Then the Philistine Lords came to her and brought the money that they had promised in her hands. She made Samson sleep on her knees and she called a man and had him shave off the seven braids of his head. Then she began to abuse Samson and his strength left him. She said, the Lord, uh, she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I was, I will go out as I have time after time and shake myself free for Samson did not know that the Lord had departed from him then the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes and they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with two bronze chains and he was forced to be a grinder of grain into the flour of meal in the prison but the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved off this is the word of God for the people of God uh, thanks be to God. Sharon or Sharice, one of y'all text Lawrence. He's texting me and I'm not, in fact, let me check it just to make sure. Oh, he's talking. To, sorry, y'all. Somebody from our building was texting us and it made me nervous, child. I didn't know if no pipes had burst in there. Um, so if you're just tuning in, we're in our series um, about being insecure. Again, uh, the series is being about insecure when people are insecure, how we interact with them or how our insecurities um, impact our interactions with other people. And we just read Judges 16 verses 1 through 22. It's the story of Samson and Delilah. Um, and God, uh, did I make a title slide? I did. I made a title slide. Give me one second. Um, I got tangled up because God started speaking to me. While I was reading, it was like, why did you catch this the first time? 
Uh, but our title today is how to know if it's toxic, how uh, to know if it's toxic, how to know if it's toxic. And this, I think, is an important message because there are so many people, right, that are dealing with toxicity in their lives. Sometimes you are the toxic person. I see things talking about what is your toxic trait. I, I'm adventure to say that everybody does something that is toxic, right? Even if it's, you know, uh, not squeezing the toothpaste out, right, or leaving text messages on red or being petty. All of us have something that's a little bit toxic about us. That's why we need a safe to cleanse us. But oftentimes we find ourselves in situations with people who are extremely toxic, right? People who have bad motives, people who desire, right? To see us fail, people who desire, right? To subdue us, right? To overpower us, to take us under. And those are the people that we have to watch. Those are the people we have to know about in advance. Like you got to have a game plan for when you encounter a toxic person because you won't have time to develop a game plan once you encounter them, right? You got to have your game plan before. You got to have your prayer strategy laid out before, right? You got to have how you're going to respond and keep your cool before because toxic people move quickly, right? And so if you are not prepared in advance, like, Lord, if I encounter somebody toxic, how do you want me to respond? Or Lord, I'm about to start this new job. Show me where the landmines are. Lord, this new person is trying to date me or slide in my DM. Show me what I need to know in advance about them so that I don't even get caught up. You need to ask God in advance for strategies because toxic people are everywhere. Lord, right? I want to get this promotion. What do I need to know about this next level? Lord, I want to run for this office or, or, or take this job. What do I need to know? Lord, I want to open this restaurant or move to this city. What do I need to know? Lord, I want to release a new product. What do I need to know? Lord, I'm about to send an email and CC some people that I ain't never talked to. What do I need to know? Because there are always toxic people in every environment. Toxins are everywhere, right? And you need to ask God for a strategy to deal with the toxins as they come. And so what we see in this passage is that when we struggle with our own insecurities, right, when we got some stuff that we ain't dealt with, when we got some vulnerabilities that we haven't addressed, it makes it really easy for toxic people or people with impure motives or people who are on assignment from the enemy to subdue us and overtake us. Yeah, you might have a little bit of willpower like Samson did for the first three times, but eventually you get so exhausted that you cave. And that is because you're looking for something, right? So we see in the text that Although Samson was strong, right? The strongest, he still had some insecurity, some voice that needed to be filled. What would it feel like to be like the strongest man in the world, somebody that nobody could subdue, uh, but you get undertaken, right, by, by, by a clever a clever woman or a clever person, right? So there was something in him that he was looking to fulfill. And we know that because before he even gets to Delilah, it says that he was dealing with some prostitutes. Now, I'm not shaming sex workers. We have women um, that have uh, escaped sex trafficking. And so that's not what this is about. In fact, let me make a disclaimer. Uh, this is not to shame sex workers. It is also not to shame women named Delilah because we got a member named Delilah too, right? Uh, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can see examples and not take them personally. But what we see in this passage is that he was paying women, right, to be in his presence, right? Paying women to be in his presence. This is the strongest man in the world who had not yet been able to build companionship with people outside of transactions, right? And so oftentimes insecure people find themselves in situations where their relationships become transactional. There's no transformation. There's what can I give you? What can you give me? And we give back to each other, right? Not necessarily 50-50 mutual, but there are transactions happening. And when you look at the etymology of prostitution, right? It says something has to be exposed or publicly offered for sale. You have to understand that insecure people are often drawn to things that have already been exposed, right? Things that are out in the open, things that are being exploited, right? Opportunities for themselves to be exploited. They don't realize that they're walking into the lion's den. They don't realize that somebody's about to exploit them, but something about the exploitation attracts them, right? Something about the risk attracts them. Something about the potential danger attracts them, right? That's a trauma response. And so we see in this passage uh, that Samson was attracted, right, to these risky situations. He was the most powerful person in the world, right? But he, att he was attracted to these risky situations. And so when I looked at the name meaning for Samson, right, it said his name means second time. 
right? It means there, it says there for the second time. That's what Samson means. There for the second time. There for the second time. That blessed me when I began to look at it because that even communicates that his name is cyclical, right? That he goes back to something again, that things happen more than one time in his life. And there are some of you who may be struggling, right? With insecurity, struggling, right? with self-doubt, struggling, right, with trauma, struggling with not feeling valuable, struggling with your inclination to go into things that are risky or to connect with people who may or may not be healthy for you. And what you see in this passage is that you might have a Samson-like personality. You go back for the second time, right? You, you knew it was messed up the first time, but you kept going back. You knew they rubbed you the wrong way, but you kept going back. You knew they were using your ideas for profit, but you kept giving them ideas. You knew they were using your body and didn't care nothing about your heart, but you kept going back. Samson means there for the second time. Um, and, and when I started to think about what that meant for us, it made me think about the struggles that we get into when we're insecure about stuff, right? You got to go back and look at your hair for the second time because you're not sure. Um, you're not sure if, if they're going to like your hair. You got to go back and check your lipstick for the second time because you're worried it might be on your teeth. You got to go back and check the email for the second time because you're worried it might be a typo and they're going to think that you're ignorant and then cancel the whole thing. You got to go back and make sure that you lock the door even though you didn't already got five minutes from your house because you are afraid that you are not intelligent enough to lock your doors. You got to go back, right? You're going back for the second time. And the enemy tricks you into cycles so that you waste time that you could be being productive. You waste time that you could be working on yourself because you are going back the second time dealing with things that you need to trust God with. He didn't want to trust God with his alone time. So he went to the prostitute. He didn't know how to find companionship in his own self. So he ended up with Delilah. What are you doing going back to for the second time? Because you have some things inside of you that you need to deal with. They've already shown you that you need to leave them alone, but you keep going back. They've already shown you that they don't have your best interest at heart, but, but you keep going back. They've already shown you that they're going to keep passing you up for promotions, but you keep clocking in. Why do you keep going back a second time instead of exploring options that value you, exploring options that affirm you, exploring options that see you for who you are, exploring options that amplify your purpose and the king kid in you. When you struggle with insecurities, as we all do, you're going to double check, right? And some of you are double checking in things that you need to be secure about, right? You going through they phone when they have not even given you a reason to doubt them. But because you've been in some bad, toxic relationships, now you're going back through everything, right? For the second time, because you done brought your insecurities and the residue from the last relationship into this new relationship. They're giving you no reason to doubt you, but you're scrolling through, right? Every post, seeing who liked it and who didn't like it, right? Zooming in on pictures. Because there is a Samson spirit on you that makes you go back for the second time. And you need to figure out what that is. Why you can't be confident enough about where God has you to live in the moment and trust God with the next. You keep going back. Why? Why? And you got to pay attention to the signs because what blessed me about this passage was Samson knew he was strong, but he didn't know how powerful he was and how much of a threat he was. The Bible says five governors hired Delilah to take him down. That is important because five people who had leadership and power and authority all came together to take down one person. This is why the enemy is tricking you about going backwards and going backwards and being worried about these cycles so that you don't even realize the forces that are raising up against you. These five powerful people who had their own agendas, their own power, their own platforms were in, in little rooms, right? In group chats, in emails, right? On Zoom meetings, right? Trying to figure out how they can stop this person who doesn't even realize that they should be walking like they're unstoppable. Right? And so when you are so insecure that you're filling the voids of insecurity with things that you need to stay away from, you miss the warning signs from God that people are trying to take you out. Right? The enemy will literally enlist people to come after you. He will switch the minds of people and make them cold against you. And if you're insecure and focused on things that you don't need to be focused on, you won't even have the wherewithal to fight the enemy that's coming after you because the enemy is afraid of you and you insecure. I'm going to say that again. The enemy was afraid of Samson, but Samson had voids to fill.
Don't think because you're insecure about certain things or you're worried about certain things or you don't think you measure up in certain areas or you don't think you're educated enough to be in the room or you don't think that you're well known enough to be in the room. Don't think for one second that the enemy agrees with you. The enemy thinks you're powerful. The enemy thinks that you're intelligent. The enemy thinks that you're that you're articulate. The enemy thinks that you're strategic. The enemy thinks that your ideas are great. The enemy thinks that you can shake your city. The enemy thinks you can shake your nation. The enemy thinks that your marriage is going to change people's lives. The enemy thinks that your child that you can't that you're struggling to conceive right now is going to change the world. And because the enemy thinks better of you than you think of yourselves, he can trick you out of your destiny by using insecurity as a weapon against you. The enemy thinks that you're powerful. The enemy's peeked into your future and saw things that intimidate him. So he'd rather intimidate you now than let you grow up into who you're supposed to be, because that is what he fears the most. Right. And so you have to know, right, that even while you are running into things, right, just to feel something, the enemy wants you there so that you don't feel confidence later. And so that's what we see right in this passage. And so his name meant. There the second time, there the second time, there the second time. And it made me think, right? It made me think of toxic water because right now all over the nation, southern cities are bracing themselves, right? Because they their, their, their electrical companies were not prepared for the weather that we just had. And so everybody's on a boil water alert. And they're telling you to boil your water before you use it to get the toxins out. But what I began to read, um, because I was reading some stuff from Black Millennials for Flint. Shout out to them, the people that we have donated to in the past so that they can send clean water to Flint. And now we find ourselves in a situation where we are using bottled water as well. Hello. Um, that they said that you need to filter the water before you boil it. And that blessed me because what I realized is we ain't even got no filters. So it's possible that even though we boil in water, there's still residue of toxins there. What am I saying? That the enemy has tricked you into cycles to go into risky things and unhealthy things. But God wants you in some cycles to get your healing together, right? You got to filter the water and then boil it and then it's safe. You got to you, filter your speech before you say it, right? Through prayer and then say it. Pray over your email before you send it and then send it. That's why you're going back to check your email 10 million times because you didn't pray before you typed it in the first place. That's why you're going back to your house after you locked the door to make sure you locked it because you didn't pray before you leave in the first place. You need to be filtering everything that you do by the Holy Spirit so that you can be confident when you have done it that you don't have to go back and check on it, right? Are you filtering, right, your relationship through Jesus before you put it on Facebook? Is this somebody you want the world to know about before they end up being a fool, right? Are you filtering that next job move, right, to make sure that it's even viable before you tell people or if you jumped in and told people you're leaving your job and they ain't even got you an offer letter and then they rescind the offer and now you ain't got no job, right? There for the second time. There are some things that you need to do twice or more than once, right? The, I tell people all the time, measure twice, cut once. If you measure it twice, you will only have to cut once. But some of us, right, this, that's a seamstress term, right? We start cutting and it's too late. And so you have to make sure that you're paying attention because if he had prayed before he went to that prostitute, he probably wouldn't have ended up there. If he had prayed before he let Delilah in his house, she probably wouldn't have been able to get there. He was a Nazarite. His life was supposed to be dedicated to the church. <laughs> but how he ended up in a prostitute's house, right? You can be confident. I mean, you can be insecure and still be a threat to the enemy. You can be an instrument of God and still find yourself tempted. God can want to use you. You can still find yourself right in a dangerous situation. And you have to be able to determine uh, how to avoid those situations by recognizing your insecurities. Right. And so you got to ask yourself, I keep going back to the same cycle. Right. I must be looking for something. Right. That I may never find unless I change my preferences. That's why I've been praying. God change my preferences. That's why when I prayed over you earlier, I said, don't let your desire for something. Right. Block you from taking God's plan because it didn't look like what you wanted. Because all of us got a Delilah. Right. It might not be a woman. Right whose lap we lay in, but your Delilah might be food. It's tempting you because food is filling your void. Your Delilah might be alcohol. It's tempting you because being drunk helps you forget your reality. It might be weed. It's tempting you because being high helps you escape the harshness of this world. It might be power. It's tempting you because you were always left out and now you want some authority. It might be status. It's tempting you because you are tired of having to build tables when other people could have just got you a chair and let you 
you sit beside them. It might be success. It's tempting you because you've been overlooked so long. You want people to see you. I don't know what your Delilah is, but insecurity can be used against you when there's something you want. You'll do the wrong things to get it. And so you need to ask yourself, what do I keep chasing that's tripping me up? Right? What do I keep chasing that's tripping me up? Because insecurity will make you chase things that will make you fall. But you serve a God, right? You serve a God that is the only person in the universe who can, listen, who can have you follow him without turning his back on you. That's for somebody that's felt abandoned. And so you're chasing people who have turned their backs to you and you keep falling on your face and you keep hitting walls because you want attention, you want love, you want affirmation, you want status, and you are used to people turning their backs on you. But God says, follow me and I'll never turn my back on you. How can you follow somebody that's that ain't turned their back on you? That's the kind of God you serve who can make you follow him without turning his back on you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never leave you for dead. He'll never run out on you, right? He'll never refuse to listen to you, you follow him, but he'll never turn his back on you. And so for those of you that have been chasing things that don't fulfill you, or co uh, co um, uh, 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 absorbing things that don't fulfill you, being connected to things that don't fulfill you, that is because your toxic trait is being insecure. And you have to, right? You have to get over that. You, you have to get over that. You have to get over that. And I'm going to fool with this camera because I see it's clicking. So I'm about to take a quick 10 second commercial break to reset it. So the first thing. I want us to look at together and thank y'all for being patient is that um, toxic love, right? It exploits your vulnerabilities. It exploits your vulnerabilities. It exploits your vulnerabilities. It exploits your vulnerabilities. You see, right, um, that uh, you, you have to know your Delilah, right? You, you have to know your Delilah. You have to know your Delilah so that you don't rest in it again. I want to say that again for somebody. It's so hot in my house. I'm at home, babe. I'm not going to take this sweat off. I forget. You have to know who your Delilah is so you don't rest in it again. I want you to get that because the Bible says she had him to sleep on her knees, which basically means she put him in her lap, right? He fell asleep in her lap. And then that was his undoing. And oftentimes when you are insecure, you're looking for a safe place to land. But you got to know what your Delilah is so that you don't rest in it again, right? Samson laid in Delilah's lap, right, where he felt safe. And sometimes where you feel safe is the deadliest place, right? Because the enemy knows they're looking for comfort. Let me make this let me make this bed of snakes look comfortable. They're looking for comfort, right? Let me look this make this abusive person look comfortable. They're looking for stability. Let me make this high paying job look safe, right? They're looking for status. Let me make this used luxury vehicle look like it's dependable. And as soon as they pay this high interest rate, it's falling apart. Let me make where they want to rest look attractive until they close their eyes. And then I reveal that it's the most dangerous place you could have ever been in. Right? Because toxic love will exploit your vulnerability. And so for Samson, right, it wasn't just sex. I don't want you to miss that. Yes. He went to, you know, see a prostitute, right? Uh, yes, he was laid up with Delilah, uh, but it was closeness and companionship that he was looking for because the Bible never says that he had sex with Delilah. It says that he went to the prostitute's house the day before, but he spent a lot of time with Delilah and it doesn't say that they had sex. It said he went into the prostitute. Going in means going in. But it doesn't say that about Delilah. They were talking about his weaknesses, about what about what he struggles with, about what can take him out. He had a real live conversations with his assassin, right? And so he was looking for closeness and he was looking for relationships and companionship. And so you need to ask yourself when you first meet somebody and they start digging in deep, what do they why do they want to know this about me? Right? Who sent you? Right. Uh, are you asking me this to help me 
or to hurt me. Because go back to name meanings. And I had to call Delilah. I remember this morning because I said, baby, listen, I'm preaching about Delilah, but I don't want you to take this personal. Right. Don't don't. This ain't about you. Right. You know, we can't control what our parents name us. We can only control what we become. Uh, but Delilah, the name, it means poor. That's one of the means. We're going to break down the whole thing as we go along. It means poor, right? And I'm telling y'all now, I'm going to have to uh, take a few commercial breaks because I'm, I'm going to be talking a while. And I think we have about maybe 30 minutes before the camera does something crazy every time. So just work with me. I'm going to try to pre-record next week. I just didn't get to it this week. Uh, but Delilah means poor. Delilah means poor. And the Bible says <laughs> that the governors came and said, we'll give you all this silver if you help us subdue this man right? We'll help you. So we'll give you this money if you help us subdue this man. Her name meant poor. That means that Delilah has some insecurities too. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, and so she needed the money, right? So the question is, you, you need to know their vulnerability so that their demons do not overpower you. Her vulnerability, her vulnerability, look, why can I say vulnerability today? Come on, Jesus. Her place of vulnerability was income. And that was the doorway that the enemy used to use her to subdue Samson. Samson's vulnerability was companionship. So you got two people, right? I don't know if this qualifies as a trauma bond. We got a bunch of therapists and psychologists at the church. But you got two people with insecurities who are now in a relationship and the enemy is manipulating both sides. Delilah, you need some money. Come here, let me trick you into selling out the man that you want to be with, right? Let me trick you. Samson, you want companionship. Let me trick you. And so both of them, right, were, both of them, right, got caught up in some mess because they both had some insecurities. You need to know their vulnerability too. Don't be telling them your life story and all of your trauma and they not saying nothing. If they sitting there talking and listening and they not sharing nothing else, baby, you in a therapy session with your assassin and you are not talking to a potential suitor, a potential spouse, a potential business partner or a friend. If you are the only one telling what makes you vulnerable, you are the only one telling what makes you weak, you are giving the enemy, right? ammunition. You are not building a relationship. And a lot of people think that sharing their weaknesses is the way to build relationships, but it is not. That is a way to get killed. That is a way to get maligned. That is a way to get destroyed, right? I have a friend, uh, one of my good friends, I hope he's not watching because he tells me that I talk too much and I tell people unnecessary information, but I'm a preacher. This is what I do for a living. I talk, right? He's like, you don't need to tell them that. What you gonna say? Don't send this email, right? And so I appreciate the friends in my life. Sharice does the same thing. And that is what I'm telling y'all now. We don't need to tell people everything because you might be having good intentions, right? I want to start fresh, tell them how my last relationship ended or tell them how my last job ended. That's the interview question. Tell us the time where you failed on your last job and how you recovered. Baby, have you a nice little political response ready? You do not have to tell them that you almost burned the building down, right? You don't have to tell people all of your details. I'll never forget. I've only worked a few jobs. Most of the time I've been contracted for churches, but I worked for a few nonprofits. And I had some small jobs I never told y'all about. Like, I worked at a bank for a little while before I decided that, that that just wasn't for me. And I'll never forget one of the jobs I worked. I told a woman um, about something that had happened to me personally. How somebody had hurt me and how a man had did something terrible to me. And she used that against me. She, she was being really passive aggressive and she came into my office and was like, well, you know, I know your past history with people doing such and such. And I just feel like that's what's happening here. And I didn't have it in me to be like, and I wasn't saved at the time, but I didn't have it in me to be like, chick, I know exactly what you're doing. And this don't have nothing to do with that. Instead, I got so angry that I cried and it made her feel validated. Like, yes, she's emotional. She's only being emotional because of what she told us. Had I never told her that? She would have never even thought she could try me like that. And so over the years, I've learned to keep my mouth shut because sometimes you think you're offering details because it makes you more human. It makes you more likable. It makes you more relatable. But the whole time, the enemy is sitting there taking notes about what they can use against you later. And so we have to learn how to keep the details to ourselves, right? Because the enemy, right, is waiting on you to be vulnerable, right? But what you need to do is figuring out, figure out what their vulnerabilities are. Because it's chestnut checkers. I used to watch Scandal. 
And I will watch Olivia Pope immediately know exactly what to say and how to navigate and how to use people's words against them in a way that they didn't even realize it was happening. And I used to pray, God, make me a strategic communicator like that. I don't want to get done with the conversation and come home and be like, oh, I wish I had said this. Like, I want to say everything I wish I would have said when the opportunity comes. And I had to start praying about how to do that because you're not going to talk me into something that I didn't even plan on going to. Right. People will do that. And they can only do that if you give them too much information. If you don't say much, they can't twist your words. If you don't listen, just listen in this season. Just listen. Just listen. If you listen in this season, the enemy won't have anything to exploit. And so you got to learn that. Even in your relationships, your romantic relationships, baby, just listen. Just listen. For them first 90 days, just listen. Just listen. They'll tell you everything that you ever wanted to know about them. Right? Because some people are only in it to see, you know, what they can get from you. And if you give them everything before you figured out that they're crazy, now you have wasted all of your time. Not crazy. We're not using that language. Before they got some struggles, right? The next thing um, that God showed me um, in that passage is that love will gaslight your reality. Listen to me. Y'all know what it means to be to gaslight? Gaslighting is when somebody makes you think, tries, they use it's a communication tactic to pretend like what is actually true never happened, right? And so an example of gaslighting is like you literally catch somebody cheating, right? Like they 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 naked in the bed and they're going to be like, no, um, actually what happened was I was sick and, and they came over here just to check on me, right? That's gaslighting. Or you're at work and you gave your idea to a friend to see if they like the idea and all of a sudden, your company is now doing the idea you told your friend and giving your friend credit. And your friend says, well, no, I, I didn't steal your idea. I, I was already working on it. And, and I just didn't feel like I needed to tell you. Baby, you're a lie. And it's the most frustrating thing in the world to be gaslit because both of y'all know they're lying. But they will not admit that they're lying. Right? It's frustrating. And they will continue to gaslight you. Right? Until you give up, walk away, or let them have it. Because the, th there's nothing you can do to stop a gaslighting cycle except to get the person that's gaslighting you to admit that they're lying. And anybody that is low enough to gaslight you is never going to admit that they're lying. So you just got to walk away. But we see that in the passage, right? Because Delilah's name also means small. She tricked him into thinking that she was more than she was. She just met him. How dare she ask him for what can kill him or what makes him vulnerable. She just met him. A small person has positioned themselves as an authority in your life within days of meeting them. And now you're telling them all of your weaknesses. Why? Because you're insecure. And so Delilah tricks him into telling him his darkest secret and they didn't even know each other. She was not even a big person in his life. She didn't even know him that well. He left the prostitute, fell in love with Delilah and immediately tells her his business. Right. And you have to understand that. Right. You, you know, when people are harming you, you know, when you're being gaslit, but you keep responding. Go back and look at the text. I want you to watch this gaslighting. And I want you to watch this. Right. Watch this. She asked him, right, um, to tell his weaknesses. And then she calls for the men. He's hearing her call for these men. And the men come to attack him. And he breaks free, right? And what does Delilah say? Her immediate response was, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me the truth. Excuse me? I have mocked you and told you lies? When you just sent men in here to kill me after asking me to tell you a secret? He did it again, right? She says, you have mocked me and told me lies, right? Again, in front of his face after people just came and tried to kill him. How much more gaslighting did Samson need to walk away from this money? And then it gets really good. At verse 15, she says, how can you say you love me and not tell me how to kill you? Gaslighting. Gaslighting. How can you say you love me and then not tell me how to kill you? That's gaslighting. And so you have to watch people who weaponize, right, your, 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 your needs against you. He wanted companionship. She knew that. So she tells him, if you're really a companion to me, you'll tell me how to kill you, even though you know I'm trying to kill you, right? If you love me, you'll let me stress you out till you have a heart attack, even though, I, even though you know you're about to die. 
If you love me, you'll work yourself to the bone, right? While I don't do nothing, right? Even though you recognize that I'm capable of doing it. If you love me, right? You'll let me do reckless things that, that put your health in, in, in jeopardy, right? Even though you know I'm doing these reckless things. How are people gaslighting you? If you want this good thing to happen, you'll do it without being compensated because you want this good thing to happen. How are you being gaslit? If you want to keep your job and you love the culture of this company, you'll work seven days a week and 60 hours a week just because you want to see this thing move forward. How are you being gaslit? Right? How are you being gaslit? If you really love me, you will love me with all my flaws. Uh, no. Let's talk about some of these flaws. Right? If you really believe in the vision, you'll give up this, 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 and this. No. I'm not going to lose what I love to chase something because you want me to. People gaslight us all the time. Samson watched this woman try to kill him three times and he kept giving her more. And so you might ask yourself, Pastor Kia, how is that? How was it that the gaslighting was so obvious and he kept going? Like, how is it that we can read this and know that this woman is trying to kill him and he kept going? Like, what was it about Delilah? Like, was she that fine? Like, what was it, right? You might be asking, but the truth of the matter is you've been Samson, man or woman romantic or platonic, personal or professional, we've all been Samson before. Well, the signs were all there, but we kept going, right? We kept going. We kept going. Give me one second. Um, we kept going. We kept going. We kept going. Uh, we kept going. And the truth of the matter is, uh, the truth of the matter is you, you, you saw it. You saw it happening. And the reason why you saw it happening and you didn't stop it is because of my final point, right? The final point is that toxic love will exhaust your energy. Toxic love will exhaust your energy. Toxic love will exhaust your energy. You can be smart. You can know the difference. You can know what people are planning. It can be right in your face. But if you're tired, you're just going to let stuff slide. Right? You're just tired. You are tired. Like, I know that they're doing some stuff that they shouldn't be doing, but, but I'm tired. I know this don't look right, but I'm tired. I know that they're asking me to do stuff, but I'm tired, right? I know that I should, I should require more, but I'm tired. I know I should point this out, but I'm tired, right? I know I should walk away, but I don't even have no energy to put into no other relationship. I know I should quit this job, but I don't even want to start looking for another job, right? I, I know I should find some new friends, but I don't even want to find no new friends. You're just tired. Toxic love will exhaust you, right? Right? It reminded me of that Carrie Hilson song, right? Y'all remember that song? Um, um, uh, having, she said, I'm, I'm having nightmares. I'm sleeping with the enemy. How do we reverse the chemistry? I don't want us to be the end of me. This love is taking all of my energy, right? She was preaching about Samson and Delilah, singing about it, right? Because the Bible says she wore him down. If you look at verse, verse 16, the NIV version said he had just gotten tired of her. The Amplified version says, he was sick to death of her. He was exhausted. She had asked him so many times that he was just like, forget it. I'm just going to tell her. Like, I would rather give in to what is dangerous to me, right? Just so that I can get you to shut up. Just so I can get you to He was exhausted. And that is how the enemy works. He will exhaust you to the point where you give in, right? I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep stretching you until you give in. I know you know that you need to be being paid more at this job, but I'm going to keep putting the work on you and keep making you think the job market is not favorable to you so that you stay in this job and give in and do work that somebody else is being paid 10 times more to do less for. Right? Right? I'm, I'm going to wear you down. I'm going to gaslight you. And, and what blessed me about this part about being exhausted is that Delilah's name, her name meaning, right? Her name meaning, right? Remember I told you biblically it meant small, biblically it meant poor. But the final thing is, right, is that it meant head of hair. Delilah meant head of hair. I started to think to myself, I said, if Delilah means head of hair, and Samson gets weak when he loses his hair, then is this a familiar spirit that took over Samson? A familiar spirit is a spirit, 
um, that connects with you because you already got it in you, right? So those of you that struggle with lust, right? But you ain't trying to tell nobody you sneaking and watching porn at night, but don't nobody know. And then you end up in a relationship with somebody that don't know how to control themselves. Familiar spirit. Right. For those of you that have struggled with perversion, but you ain't told nobody, you end up in a relationship with somebody that is extremely perverse, familiar spirit. For those of you that struggle, right, with being in control, and so you got to check everything, check behind everybody, then you end up with somebody that's abusive, familiar spirit. It doesn't happen all the time, but familiar spirits will attract each other. And so what you do not call out and get cast out and delivered from will always draw itself to you. And so what we see in the passage is you got a man with a head full of hair. That's his strength. You got a woman whose name means head full of hair. And she's drawn to him to take him out. And so you got to ask yourself, what familiar spirits have I drawn into my life? And why are they exhausting me? Right? What familiar spirits? Because the person at your job that's gaslighting you, they struggling with job security too. Same spirit. Right? The person that is lying to you about who they are, right? And you done fell in love with the representative. They have insecurities about being left alone just like you. And that's why y'all ended up together, right? The people in business and in the community, right? Who are blocking you from having access to the things that you need. They have the same insecurity about not having power just like you, right? It's a familiar spirit. And so you need to pray, right? One, that you are delivered from the things that are not like God. The insecurities that overpower your ability to trust God. The lack of faith that becomes a barrier between you and where God wants to take you. You pray that God delivers you from those things. And if there are any hidden spirits that you have not yet acknowledged, you need to pray that God delivers them, delivers you from them so that the enemy cannot see that in you and send somebody that got it in them too. Delilah's name meant head of hair. She was literally, right? What the what the SWE song? When the problem and the cure is you. She was the problem and the cure. Right? She was the problem and the cure. And so you need to ask yourself, right? Because the cycles, the going back. What familiar spirit am I letting rule my life? What do I need to be? What do I need to be delivered from, so that I don't keep doing that? It's a question I have had to ask myself in several different areas of my life. Because you start to think, oh, this is how God speaks to me. Oh, God speaks to me through my body. Maybe God ain't speaking to you through your body. Maybe you keep being led away by a spirit to do the same thing, and God got to keep giving you the same lesson. Or you might say, God always speaks to me through my emotions and my relationships. Maybe God is not speaking to you through relationships. Maybe you keep going back to the same things and God got to teach you the same lesson. But that ain't not how God wants to speak to you. Right? So you need to ask yourself, what's in me that's making me go through these cycles? What's in me that I can't shake this thing loose? What's in me that's... Because for some of us, it ain't even that you got a need for attention or a need to be affirmed. I'm talking to you single people or need to be connected. Sometimes it's your need to fix people that it helps you end up in toxic situations. It ain't that you're struggling with security. You know that you're intelligent, attractive, and successful, but you like fixing people. And that is toxic and insecure because what makes you think that you are a God to fix people? And you'll end up in toxic cycles. Not because you don't think you're cute enough to have somebody better. Not because you don't think you're smart enough to have somebody better. Not because you don't think you're successful. It's because you think that you are strong enough to fix this person. Come here, Samson. I'm the strongest person in the world, but I'm with a toxic person. And who going to talk you out of it? You're the strongest person in your circle. Who going to talk you out of it? So you have to recognize what your vulnerabilities are, what your weaknesses are, right? What, 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 what demons always coming after you so that you stop falling victim to them every time and going back a second time. Because at the end of the day, Delilah was able to capitalize on what Samson struggled with. But if Samson had dealt with his struggles, there would never have been a Delilah. And if Delilah had been financially secure, she would never have taken down Samson. 
all of us, right, have something we need to work on. And whatever that area is, the enemy's going to use it against you. He's going to use it against you, right? Some of you procrastinate, not because you're lazy, but because you're afraid of failing and the enemy is using it against you. Some of you don't speak up, not because you don't know what to say, but because you are afraid of being seen fully for who you are and then being required to show up as your full self every day after you speak up, right? Some of you, right? Are afraid to walk away, not because you don't know you need to, but because you are exhausted and you don't want to start over. Some of you are afraid, right, to quit your job, not because you don't have no money in the bank, because please believe you need some money in the bank, but because you are afraid to work as hard as you're going to have to work to pay your bills when somebody else ain't giving you a check on the 1st and the 15th. What toxicity do you have that is rooted in insecurity about being your best self that is blocking you from walking into the doors that God wants to walk you into? Because Delilah is not a woman who's lap you lay in. Delilah is the place where you have found rest that is killing your purpose. Because Samson's purpose was to be strong. And he rested in the wrong place. And it took his strength. Have you rested in a job? Right? That is not your purpose. Have you rested in a relationship? That is not your purpose. Have you rested in a role at your church that is smaller than what God has called you to be? Have you rested in your city in a corner that is not the place where God is called? Where have you rested? Where have you rested? That is killing your purpose. Where have you laid down when God has called you right to rise up? Where have you closed your eyes when God has called you to open up your eyes and see? Where have you gotten quiet where God has called you to speak up? What is Delilah sucking out of you that God wants to use for his glory? Because toxic love will make you tired because the enemy knows a tired saint is a saint that can't work. And a saint that can't work is no longer a threat to what the enemy wants to do. You're tired because you are resting in places that God has not called you to rest. So it's not about who you having sex with. That's just part of it. It's about where have you allowed yourself to rest, right? When God has called you to do great things. Let me fix the camera while we pray. God, we thank you. We give you glory and honor for this day. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for uh, your presence. We thank you for all that you have done for us, even through this service, God, for how you have spoken to us, God, how you have shown us, God, your plan for us, how you have shown us, God, exactly what you have called us to do, God, for how you have shown us the places where we have rested that we didn't need to rest, for how you've shown us, God, the people that we've connected to that we need to disconnect from, for how you've showed us ourselves, God, the parts of us that need to change, the parts of us that need to be confident, the parts of us, God, that need to be strong, the parts of us that need to have standards, the parts of us that need to shut up and stop giving away details, God, the parts of us that need to call a spade a spade, the parts of us that will no longer be gaslit anymore, the parts of us that will no longer be vulnerable, but people who don't deserve our vulnerabilities and the parts of us in the name of Jesus, who no longer allow ourselves to rest in places that we were never called to take refuge in. And so we thank you, leave you going on to God that you are helping us to have the discernment to identify what is toxic and what is not toxic, to identify what is healthy and what is not healthy, and to gravitate to the healthy places and to disintegrate all but connections and bonds, God, to things that are toxic. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. And thank God, the doors of my father's house are open. If you would like to become a member of the Church of the Well, you can do so two ways. You can do so by emailing admin at we make wells. This is important if you're going to be catching this when it's not live. Um, if you're going to watch this on YouTube after service or if you see this on Facebook after the service is ended, we would like you to email us at admin at we make wills. But if you're live and you want to join and walk down our digital aisle, you can do so by typing in the comments, I want to be a will maker. We are 33 people from 400 members, which is mind blowing. We're only two years old, right? Only two years old and we about to have 400 members. And so if you want to be a part of the journey to 400, it would be really dope if we can get to 400 by Easter. 
um, that you can do that um, by e by typing in the comments, I want to be a well maker. We are a church that blesses our members. We just sent a car to Oregon to one of our members that's helping women uh, escape from sex trafficking. We, uh, we purchased a, a furnace for some of our members who were living without heat. We sent Instacart memberships to all of our members so that they can stay home during the pandemic. We sent blue light blocking lenses to all of our members so that they can protect their eyes while they stream service or work or um, or work or go to school from home we love our members in fact this week was the one-year anniversary where we gave people um money so that they could get billboards now let me be clear none of y'all ninjas have turned in what you need to turn it do your billboard except for Sharice and Martise. I'm going to say the offer is expired, but I don't want to because we got it on Facebook. But if you were on that stage and we promised you a billboard outside of the pandemic, if you got a business that has not been infected by the pandemic, get your billboards. I don't, I don't like saying stuff that I didn't do. And we said we were giving you billboards. So you need a high quality photo. You don't had over a year to get high quality photos and a website. Let your church bless you. With a billboard, but you need to do what you need to do. So I've received the stuff, uh, some of the stuff, not all of the stuff, I think, because I don't think Martise emailed me the updated photos, but I'm receiving stuff from Martise and Sharice. Their billboards will be going up in the next two weeks, but the rest of y'all ninjas, get on it, or I'm going to start giving it to other members because I feel like a liar. Every time I scroll that page and see them billboards, and I'm like, but they didn't turn into stuff. And we personally called y'all and texted y'all several times like hey can we get your stuff we want to bless you you online advertising your business right uh please 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 send page or me your um your high resolution photos and info so that we can do your billboards right it's time y'all it's been a year and i feel crazy i'm like i wish somebody would give me a billboard and I, it'll be a year later and i still ain't email back <laughs> y'all might have forgot but we did remind you in the pandemic we also called you and texted you uh, so make sure that you don't miss out on that. But if you want to join a church that gives away billboards to business owners, uh, email us at admin at wemakewells.org or type in the comments, I want to be a well maker. Um, they're going to put that in the comments so that you have the info um, and you won't miss that. It is giving time. How do we pay for stuff like billboards? With offerings. Now, by the way, it's not super expensive. We have a partnership with um, a billboard company and a local business gave us money to be able to do what we did. And so it didn't cost the church that much, but we're able to do things like that um, through your giving. So if you want to give today, uh, you can give um, and get to paypal.me slash we make wells or to cash app dollar sign we make wells. Again, you can give to our PayPal. That's paypal.me slash we make wells or to dollar sign we make wells. Again, uh, that number is, I mean, that number. The ways to give are to our PayPal. That's paypal.me slash we make wells. Or to our, ca our cash app, which is dollar sign, we make wills. If you are giving today, we don't believe that you're cursed if you don't tithe. So if you can't tithe today, um, we invite you to give whatever you can uh, as a cheerful giver. Um, but everybody should be able to give something, right? Particularly um, those of you that are participating and active in church, give back to the place that you're helping to serve. Even if it's $5 a week, give something to your church so that we can keep going. Um, and if you're tithing today, that's 10% of your gift of, of your earnings. And so if you receive um, $100 this week, your, your tithe would be 10. If you received uh, $1,000, your tithe would be $100. If you receive $10 this week, your tithe would be $1, but you give God 10%. And the Bible gives you promises for tithing. It says that he opened up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, you wouldn't have room enough to receive. It says um, that he uh, would uh, command men to give unto your bosom, which means that people would freely bless you without you asking. It says that your cups would run over, uh, that you'd be able to rebuke the devourer and trample upon service. All of these promises. Promises, right? I promise to people who do tithe. So again, we encourage tithing at the church. This is a tithing church. Millennials do tithe. Uh, but if you are not um, a tither, it's okay. We just encourage you to give with cheer. God loves a cheerful giver. So whatever that is, if you're a well dater, a first timer, you're not a member, or you're a member and you haven't been tithing, we encourage you to give with cheer today. God has blessed you. He kept you, right? Give God something, right? To let him know that you hear him, that you receive this word. You want to seal it with a gift so that we can go bless some people this week who may have suffered some, some extreme situations during this storm. We do that with your giving. Let's pray. God, we thank you. 
We give you glory and honor for those who have given today, for those who will give. We ask that you touch every person's heart. God, that they will be able to give something back to your kingdom, that we might continue to do your missions and bless people who are in need. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you prick the hearts of people who are afraid to give to churches, who don't trust churches with their seed, and you show them that this is a church that you can they can trust. We ask that you bless those people who give, who give unselfishly, who tithe and do more than their tithe each week, and they are the lifeblood of this church. Bless them this week. God, we're blessed they don't have room enough to receive. Remind them, God, this week that you see their giving, that you are excited about their giving, and that you are rewarding them from heaven in a way that only you can. God, help them reap 10, 100, and even 1,000 fold on their gifts, God, because you are a God who loves those who give with cheer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, and thank God. Again, if you want to give today, you can give to paypal.me slash we make wills. Or the dollar sign, we make wills at Cash App. They put that info in the comments. Um, and so we are concluding today. Uh, the I feel like an old Baptist preacher. We see there were none and yet there is room. I'm sad that nobody joined today. It's been two Sundays without people joining. Y'all need to get y'all friends and families in here, child. We supposed to be, I got a, I got one of my classmates said somebody's supposed to join every Sunday or you ain't do something right. <laughs> so we're going to say that the people that were supposed to join, maybe they're at home and, and struggling with power. We're going to find them this week and bless them. And bring them on in. It's too many people that need a church home. So find your friends and family. Get them to stream next week as we continue our series on being insecure. I think these last few messages have blessed me. Alisa Allen, if you're thinking about it, we praying for you, sis. Uh, we praying for you. Uh, we would love for you to be a uh, part of the first 400 members of this church. Um, I think uh, we were calling the people from the first year founding members, but I think we can call their first 500 founding members. I just, I feel like that's a that's a nice number. And maybe we'll get to 500 by the end of this year. That would be mind blowing. Because in my mind, if I had 500 members when I, you know, at the end of this story, um, you know, if, if we just only had 500 forever, I would have been happy. I thought we'd only have 15. So the fact that we almost about to have 400 people is just blowing my mind. Uh, but 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 we're praying for those of you that are on the fence, you know, make sure that you're involved in small groups, that you're getting more out of service, that you're active in small groups. I'm calling people. Come on, Kiara. She said she chose up Friday. Um, I'm calling the people that didn't that, that haven't shown up um, to small groups uh, because y'all didn't sign up and didn't show up to find out why you ain't coming because that is how you learn and grow. So if you sign up for small groups, if you was doing it for attention, if you didn't show up and you was doing it for attention, you finna get some attention because pastor's gonna be calling you this week to find out why you ain't been in small groups, boo. Um, and so we'll be looking for you this week. Uh, and shout out to the small group team. Y'all got, you guys are doing amazing. I heard you guys had a good meeting yesterday. i um, got some of the feedback and I'm looking forward to chatting with some of you offline about some of the feedback you gave, but I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me as I pray for you. We will see you guys at small groups and then back again next Sunday. I love you guys. Have a great week.